So, we are in Matthew chapter 12, verse 9. Thank you very much. Isaac, careful with the pages, sir. Jen, Jen, not Ricky. Okay. And there you go. Matthew twelve what? Ten. Verse nine. Actually, let me back up to verse eight and I'm gonna run through about verse twenty one. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath days. In reference to the Pharisees and the plucking of grain heads, among other things. Let me ask you this as a question. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Are we supposed to serve the Sabbath day? The Sabbath day is supposed to serve us. Bingo. Like, out of the park. Babe Ruth, bingo. Ted Williams, batting average, bingo. Okay. And, of course, I just poured water all over myself. Beautiful. Um, (laughs) So... We got this idea that the the Sabbath is frequently a day of rules and regulations. It's primarily a day of liberation. Noting the cardinal inside the holly bush. Looks very cute to see her. Oh, that was sweet. We were made for not serving the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for giving us rejuvenation. It was designed for us. It was designed to be a resource for us, not a day where we observe 52 rules and regulations on what to do and when to do it and how to do it. Attend church for 90 minutes, 130 minutes of three hours on Sunday morning between the hours of nine and noon. Now, Get your rest, bro. Recuperate. Chill out. Reflect on the week. Rest isn't always a physical stop because a lot of people do get refreshed in church. And rest in church, it's a a different perspective. It's a refreshment. It's a putting your eyes back on the Lord. Yes. Um, So, and I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm... I am agreeing with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I definitely got a hit from the Lord on one teaspoon only on that. So, just built for more than a teaspoon. Very good. Go ahead. Um, so, so, we have to be careful of our definition of rest. Um, rest can mean lots of different things, and it doesn't always mean like sleeping in. Um, although it might mean that for a season. You know, there might be a season when we need the physical sleep, but it, it usually means a lot more than that. It's a lot more well rounded. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And, you know, the Desert Fathers, Anthony of the Desert and others, even spent time in a season where they were in a constant state of rest, even in the midst of their work. We have to learn how to embrace a mentality and a mindset of rest, even if we may not physically be ceasing from all activity. You know, we enter into our Sabbath rest. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Psalm 95, 7 through 9, and Hebrews 7 through 11, and Hebrews 4. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. As at Meribah and Masa. I swore in my wrath they will not enter into my rest. We need to labor to enter into his rest. He has a rest appointed for us. We're not constantly going and going and going. Now, there are some people that I know that run eight days a week. For those of you that didn't catch the joke, that was a joke. Eight days a week. Yes. 
and they legit need a literal 24 hour period where they are doing nothing. Because they're running like a dog. I have a friend who's a youth pastor who acts like they don't need rest. Okay. We do need rest. Now, what that rest looks like, <coughs> Father helps us to construct that from season to season, from age to age, from month to month, from year to year in our lives. Know what that looks like. But it was made for us, not us for it. In other words, serving all the rules and regs in order to make sure that we have rested properly. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Being refreshed. We often don't plug in to our spirits and ask our spirits what it needs in order to be recharged. Sometimes it needs ministry to people so that it can recharge. There are stories. I have a friend who had an optical nerve pit in one of his eyes where he couldn't see well out of one of his eyes. He did ministry to people's human spirits. And in the <coughs> process later on, his optic nerve pit disappeared and he could see much better out of that eye. So it's a matter of constructing what this rest and this Sabbath looks like for each of us. When you're in college and you're serving in a church, like new ministry or whatever the case, and you're doing ministry on Sunday mornings or whatever the case, Saturdays, if you work with somebody that's got a, 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 a Saturday Sabbath, those days for you, you're going to be working. For a pastor, you're going to be working. There are a whole lot of pastors that I know of and probably mom <clears throat> knows of, grandma knows of, that take their Mondays off and they do nothing and they unplug and they disconnect. So it might mean that you rest on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, whatever day, <coughs> according to your design, you're made to unplug on unplug like don't be there like do not work cease from your activity reflect re-engage take this lessons that you learned about this week and move forward into the next week with a renewed sense of purpose destiny and vision we are entering into a season of reconciliation reconciliation with our destiny which, all, which incorporates community and land and our calling and all, a whole host of other things. <coughs> Continuing on. Verse 10. And there was a man which had his hand withered. <clears throat> and they asked him, saying, it is, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him? Earlier we said last time that Jesus knew that they were looking to trap him. They really weren't asking for an answer to that particular question. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will not lay hold of it, and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep, which is lawful to do, wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days? Take care of one another on the Sabbath days. Don't neglect your relationships on the Sabbath days. To the degree that those relationships are life-giving and refreshing, some of those can be better nurtured on the Sabbath. You connect with people. If you're, you know, doing whatever and you've got your Sabbath day, you take you take and you go hit the links, you play some golf if that's refreshing, you play some rugby or football or baseball or basketball if that's refreshing to recharge before you go back into what it was you were made to do. Therefore he said to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. The man stretched his hand out like this. Withered hand, and he stretched it into the new reality, and it was made new. It was restored whole, like as the other. Like this, he stretched it in, and it was like it stretched through an invisible door, and... Whoosh, holy crow, we have a brand new hand here. Bam. It was strengthened. It was recharged. It was made brand spanking new. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him how they might destroy him. 
Jesus didn't lay hands on this guy. He just said, stretch forth your hand. All right. Oh. Guy's life was changed forever. He said, he probably spent the day and did like this. And I would really love to know what in that constituted even breaking their tradition of work. It's not like he went into surgery for four hours. I mean, really, what did he do that constituted breaking their tradition of work? That's insane. Give the advice. <laughs> but the sadder part is their heart wasn't at all moved with compassion toward this man who was suffering. Mm-hmm. Or with joy with his healing. Their hearts were moved to a murderous plan to destroy their creator. Oh my word. It's very sad. The irony. Let's see. 12 to Many rabbis permitted healing on the Sabbath only when a life was at risk. Otherwise it was illegal to tie a bandage, set a broken bone, or administer medicine. Some rabbis even banned prayer for the sick on the Sabbath. Wow, they so didn't have the heart of God. Yeah, mm. they really didn't. They missed the boat on it. What mine says is technically Jesus did not apply any medical treatment or even lay hands on the man. No one considered a command to stretch out one's hand as work. Mm -hmm. That commentary from Matthew and mine was from Charles Quarles of Louisiana College. Ph.D. Mid-American Baptist Theological Seminary. Gives a citation to. That's crazy. Ban prayer on the Sabbath. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't touch the man. He didn't set a bone. He didn't do anything. He just let reality, let actual reality come in, break forth into this man's life. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Earlier in the Gospel of Matthew. And earth doesn't have any sickness. Heaven doesn't heaven. have any sickness. Heaven. Yes. So let it move into and touch the reality in earth. Walking in principles. The principle here was compassion. The principle here was God is creative. He created rest on, this, on the seventh day. He created refreshment and restoration, being made new on the Sabbath day. That's right in alignment with what he was doing here. A miracle on the Sabbath day has to take place. If you're talking about refreshment and renewal, being made whole, wholeness, fulfillment, all the best parts of the seventh day. Time being sanctified. His timeline was forever changed because he went like this, hand was made new, awe of God explodes all over his life and his timeline on that day. And for years after, in his old age, he was like, that rabbi did this. Enabled this to happen. And probably used it as a touch point to minister to other people. But when Jesus knew it, <coughs> he withdrew himself from thence, and all the great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Esaias, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, in him my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall shew judgment to the Gentiles. What prophet? Esaias. It's the Greek form of Isaiah. Okay. So King James likes to pull these things. Uh, and for example, earlier in the Gospel of Matthew, it refers to the prophet Jeremiah. The King James will translate it King, uh, Jeremy, the prophet. Okay. Esaias and then Elias, which would be Eliah. Same concept. <clears throat> because they're taking the Greek and transliterating it. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall shew judgment 
which means decision here to the Gentiles. He will grant them decision. He will grant them a hearing. He will grant them a hearing. He will render verdicts. He will care for them, give them an opportunity to receive. The God of the Jews will do this. We'll touch more on that next time, but I wanted to give a little bit of a foretaste of where we were going with this. It's good. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. Quietness, softness. He shall not strive. A bruised reed shall he not break. A smoking flax shall he not quench. Till he shall send forth judgment unto victory. Judgment means decision. Decision to victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. They'll trust him because he's not going to bash them like these religious Jews bashed. So, gang, those are our thoughts. <coughs> All of us gathering in Bershava, we bless you all with much shalom shpekah.